some of the nadarians they are sessile meaning they are not capable of moving from one place to another they stick to a particular substratum or they root themselves to a particular substratum what are those tentacles it is nothing but a group of cells coming together to form a tentacle which is nothing but a tissue which performs a particular function what is the capturing prey nadarians exhibit dash symmetry meaning they have a symmetry you can divide the body into two different halves Hello everyone a warm welcome to the session on first pc biology i'm dr divya biology faculty with the ashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore so in this session let us talk about phylum coelenterata which is also called as nidaria under chapter 4 that is animal kingdom so we learn about the characteristics of this particular phylum and then move on to learning about some of the mcqs that can be framed under this particular topic So phylum Coelenterata they are also called as nidarians because they have specialized structures called as nidoblast or nematocyst in them so that is why one more name for them is nidaria or nidarians and talking about their habitat they are aquatic wherein they are marine that is they usually live in oceans and seas and they are they can be sessile that is they can be fixed to a particular substratum in one particular place in the sea or ocean bed or they can be free swimming wherein they can swim freely from one place to another in the aquatic habitat talking about the level of organization so they show tissue level of organization wherein a group of cells which are closely packed come together to perform a particular function and their mode of cell arrangement is diploblastic wherein the cells are arranged in two lay embryonic layers wherein it has an outer ectoderm and an inner endoderm so all this we have studied in session 1 of this particular chapter wherein we learned about the basis for characterizing an organism right so in that we had learned what is diploblastic and all that so if you want to know about it you can go back to that session under this particular chapter next talking about the digestion it is extracellular and intracellular that is the digestion can occur outside the cells of the organism or it can occur inside the cells of the organism therefore it is called extracellular or intracellular next talking about the structure of the nidarians or the coelenterates so they are radially symmetrical so what is radial symmetrical we learnt about two types of symmetry right that is bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry so radial symmetry just imagine a cake so a cake when you draw how do you cut a cake from the center right so when you draw points from the center like this this half is similar to this half this to this this to this right so the one half is similar to the other half so that is called as radial symmetry so what is bilateral symmetry now i have a cake if i draw exactly a line at the center this half is similar to this half it's called bilateral by bi means two so i'm drawing a line in the central axis it is or the central plane it is it divides wherein one half is exactly the copy of the mirror image of the other half that is bilateral symmetry so this is radial symmetry so in radial symmetry means from the center if i draw lines and if we see that particular organism each half is similar to the other so that is about bilateral or sorry that is about radial symmetry so they are radially symmetrical and one of the most peculiar or one of the most distinguishing characteristic of this particular organism that is nidarians is that they contain stinging capsule so stinging capsule is like a protective gear for these particular organisms or it is a defensive structure for these particular organisms wherein they can frighten the other organisms which are coming to disturb them by stinging them using the stinging capsules and these stinging capsules are nothing but it is also called as nematocysts so where are these stinging capsules exactly present in these particular organisms so they are present in their tentacles and hence they are called as 
nidoblast or nidocyte so the tentacles bearing stinging capsules or nematocysts in this particular organism are called as nidoblast or nidocyte so therefore the name nidarian has come for this particular organism and the nidoblast what is their function why is it there in this particular organism one is for anchorage I told you some of the nidarians they are sessile meaning they are not capable of moving from one place to another they stick to a particular substratum or they root themselves to a particular substratum so for rooting like other for example like plants do they have roots no right so what do they have they have this nidoblast or nidocytes which not only helps in defense mechanism but also helps the, these organisms to anchor or to fix themselves to a particular substratum like you might have seen in ships right ships have anchors the anchors are very heavy so what they do is they drop that anchor into the ocean bed and once it reaches the ocean bed it will just settle in the sand or the ocean bed so that the ships whenever the water current is more the ships doesn't sail off on its own so they use anchors right just like that these nidocysts or nidoblasts they act like anchors wherein they help the particular organism to fix in a particular place so that they don't get washed away by the ocean or the sea currents and not just that they as i told you they also help in defense that is especially for capturing prey so they use these nidoblast or nidocyst wherein they it is poison stings right so or it ha, it is called as poison capsules wherein they inject using that they inject to that particular organism and they make that organism either to fall conscious or to get paralyzed so that they can easily catch it as a prey and then feed on it so these are the functions of the nidoblast it's talking about their gastrovascular cavity so they have a central gastrovascular cavity wherein it has a single opening called hypostome so that hypostome is nothing but it is the oral tip from which the tentacles arise right so uh, from wherever the tentacle arise that is that the tip of the mouth where the tentacles arise that particular portion is called as the hypostome so all the hypostome so this is the mouth part or we can call it it has the opening which is the hypostome so if you see here from this portion from this hypostome all the tentacles come so that is the the region from where or the opening that is present at the tip or at the mouth portion of the nidarians from where the tentacles arise it is called as the hypostome and what is the skeleton made up of they need to have a particular shape or a structure so they have a framework of framework right which is called as the skeleton so the skeleton is composed of calcium carbonate especially in corals so all of you have heard about the great barrier reef right which has the largest coral collection that reef has the or that ocean has the largest coral collection in the world so that coral they have a hard covering on themselves which is nothing but made up of calcium carbonate or we can call it as a calcareous covering so calcareous covering means nothing but the skeleton or the covering is made up of calcium carbonate and they have two basic body forms that is polyps and medusa form so what is this polyp and medusa form let's look into so polyp form is sessile so sessile means they are not capable of moving from one place to another or they are not capable of swimming they stay in one particular place rooted to that particular substratum they are sessile they are cylindrical for example like hydra adamsia etc so this is hydra adamsia so these are sessile so this is a polyp form it is a polyp form it is cylindrical and tube like if you can see it they also bear a hypostome they have tentacles and all that but their body shape is cylindrical so those organisms which have a cylindrical body shape and which are sessile that is which are not capable of swimming they are called as such body forms are called as polyps and those which are umbrella shape and are free swimming for example aurelia which is also called as jellyfish so this is aurelia if you can see this there it is umbrella shaped 
it looks like an umbrella like when you open an umbrella how it looks exactly like that it looks and they are capable jellyfishes are capable of swimming freely in the ocean so this body form which are umbrella shaped and which are free swimmers they that is called as medusa form and there are some organisms which exhibit both the polyp and the medusa form that is they show alternation of generation or uh, so alternation of generation which is also called as metagenesis so metagenesis means alternation of generation you have studied in bryophytes and all that right bryophyte shows alternation of generation from saprophytic to gametophytic and from gametophytic to saprophytic likewise these organisms some of the nidarians are only in polyp body form that is cylindrical body form or sessile which are sessile and some nidarians are only in medusa body form that is umbrella shaped body form and they are free swimming but there are certain uh, nidarians for example obelia so this is obelia so this organism has two types of body form so in their life cycle sometimes they have a polyp body form and sometimes they have a medusa body form so nidarians which exist in both polyp and medusa forms they exhibit metagenesis which is nothing but alternation of generation that is the polyps produce medusa asexually and the medusa forms the polyp sexually that is the polyps get converted into the medusa form so cylindrical form gets converted into umbrella shaped form in a asexual manner and the medusa form then undergoes into a or then gets converted into a polyp body form by a sexual manner so therefore there is alternation of generation between asexual cycle and a sexual cycle here so therefore it is called as metagenesis that is they have two types of body form here polyp and medusa form so the best example is obelia so obelia some part of their life they live in the cylindrical shape that is in polyp form and in some part of their life they live in the form of a umbrella shape that is medusa form next talking about some of the examples so we have physalia which is called as portuguese man of war so physalia which is portuguese man of war then we have adamsia which is called as sea anemone so you all of you might have seen sea anemone right wherein the beautiful cute little clown fishes that live with mutual understanding they live with the sea anemones so it is sea anemone so this is sea anemone then penatula which is called a sea pen so it looks exactly like a pen so that is why it is called a sea pen then gorgonia which is sea fan it looks like fan then we have this uh, meandrina which looks like a brain so brain coral so you have meandrina here then we have the sea pen and we have the sea fan so all these are different examples that come under sealantrata or nidarians so this was about the sealant rate so now we know the characteristics and examples and all that so we look into some of the mcqs that can be framed under this particular topic so nidarians exhibit dash symmetry is it asymmetry no because i have already asked the question nidarians exhibit dash symmetry meaning they have a symmetry you can divide the body into two different halves right is it radial now because it is a it has a symmetry we have to understand whether it is radial bilateral or horizontal so there is no nothing like horizontal symmetry so therefore we have to see whether it is radial or bilateral here it is radial symmetry so they exhibit radial symmetry next phylum dash has stinging capsules or they can ask the question as phylum dash has nematocysts phylum dash has nidoblasts or nidocysts so like that the questions can be framed for all of this the answer is nothing but sealenterata or instead of sealenterata here they can give the option as nidaria that is also correct because sealenterates are also called as nidarians or they can give an example so then you have to be very careful by while choosing the examples so the answer is sealenterata next nidarians exhibit dash level of organization it is tissue level of organization that they show so for example i told you they have tentacles bearing stinging capsules right or nematocysts what are those tentacles it is nothing but a group of cells coming together to form a tentacle which is nothing but a tissue which performs a particular function what is that capturing prey right so therefore they have tissue level of organization 
Next dash exhibits diploblastic cell arrangement. Is it Aurelia, Adamsia, both A and B? Is it liver fluke? Aurelia is nothing but jellyfish. Adamsia, it is sea anemone that comes under uh, cilentrates itself. So therefore, both A and B is the right answer. Liver fluke, no. Liver fluke comes under flatworms, that is platyhelminths. So it is nothing to do with cilentrata. So therefore, diploblastic cell arrangement is seen in both A and B, that is Aurelia and Adamsia in this particular case. Uh, liver fluke, they have triploblastic cell arrangement. Next, the skeleton of corals is made of, is it cellulose? No, cellulose is found in plants usually. Spongin fibers, no, because spongin fibers, we see it in poriferans or sponges. Is it calcium carbonate? Is it chitin? Not chitin as well. It is calcium carbonate. So, the answer is calcium carbonate. Next, the sessile cylindrical body form of sealant rate is called medusa. Medusa, no, because medusa is umbrella shaped and they are not sessile, they are free living. Is it polyp? Yes, polyp is the right answer because polyp is cylindrical in shape and they are sessile. They are not capable of moving. Is it hypostome? No, because hypostome is a region that is present somewhere or it is the opening that is present in the mouth from which the tentacles arise. So it has nothing to do with the body shape. Is it nematosis? No, nematosis are defense organs or defense, defensive cells that are present in the uh, sealant rate. So therefore the answer here is polyp. Next, medusa body form is observed in is it hydra, adamsia, aurelia or octopus? It is Aurelia because Aurelia, they can also give the option as jellyfish. Then this is also the right one. No, Hydra and Adamsia, they show polyp forms of body forms. Octopus, no, octopus doesn't come under sealant traits and octopus do not exhibit Medusa body form. So therefore, it is Aurelia that exhibits Medusa body form which is umbrella shaped. So, the shape of jellyfish is umbrella. Medusa is nothing but umbrella shape. So, therefore, C is the right answer here. Next question. Dash exhibits metagenesis or they can ask the question as dash exhibits alternation of generation. Alternation of generation. So, like this also the question can be asked because alteration of generation is nothing but metagenesis itself. Is it Hydra, Adamsia, Aurelia or Obelia? The answer is Obelia. Hydra and Adamsia, they have only polyp body form. Aurelia has, um, this is the wrong answer. Aurelia has uh, umbrella shaped body form. It is uh, this Obelia that exhibits metagenesis. That is uh, one half of its life it lives in polyp body form. The other half in Medusa body form. So therefore the answer is Obelia here. Next, Dash is also called as Portuguese man of war. So, Portuguese man of war, is it Physalia, is it Adamsia, is it Penatula or Meandrina? So, Adamsia, it is also called as C. Pen. So, here Adamsia is called as C. Anemone. It is also called as Adamsia. Penatula, the word itself says Penatula, Pen, C. Pen. Meandrina is brain coral, is brain coral, it's a coral, it's brain coral. Physalia is the one that is called as Portuguese man of war. So the right answer here is Physalia or they can ask in the exam, dash is also called as sea anemone, dash is also called as sea pen, dash is also called as brain coral, like that also questions can be framed. So you have to be, you have to learn in that way as well. Here the right answer is A, it is Physalia. So Physalia is the right answer here. Next tenth one, the opening in sealant rates that bear the nematocyst is called, what is it called? Is it called a polyp? No, because we know polyp is a body form. Is it a medusa? No, that is also a body form. Is it a nidaria? No, nidaria is an example for nidarians. It is a hypostome because hypostome is the opening that is present in the mouth region from where the tentacles arise and it is in these tentacles that the nematocysts or nidoblasts or nidocysts are Nidocytes are present. So, therefore, the opening in sealant rates that bear the nematocyst is called hypostome. So, hypostome is the right answer. So, this was about the session wherein we looked into the general characteristics and also got to know what types of MCQs can be framed under this particular topic. So, I hope you understood this session. So, we shall 
move on to an, another topic in the next session wherein we learn about the MCQs also under that topic. So we shall meet again in the coming session. Thank you.